Well, the uh, European Society of Cardiology just issued a 2023 update of the 2021 heart failure guidelines. And uh, this is an interim report and there will be a full guideline in several years from now. But there were two very interesting aspects of this particular update. First was that SGLT2 inhibitors are now recommended across the entire spectrum of ejection fraction, including a reduced and preserved ejection fraction, and that represents an upgrade for SGLT2 inhibitors in the guidelines. The second very interesting part of the guideline was that there was an active discussion about getting rid of the term HEFPEF, getting rid of the term heart failure and preserved ejection fraction, and instead using the term heart failure with a normal ejection fraction divided at about 60, 65 percent ejection fraction. And there are many, many good reasons to move the line from where it is now, which is about 40 percent, up to about 60 to 65 percent. But the committee thought that that represented such a major change in thinking that it was best to keep this for the full update that would be issued in two, three years from now. So uh, I think we have a clue as to how they are thinking about this. And I think within a short period of time, we will only have heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with a normal ejection fraction. We have data now from about the efficacy of SGLT2 inhibitors in 13 large-scale double-blind placebo-controlled trials involving 80,000 patients followed for years including patients with who had diabetes, chronic kidney disease, chronic heart failure, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, every single one of these trials showing a striking similarity of findings, which is a reduction in the combined risk of cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalizations, primarily driven by reduction in heart failure hospitalizations by about 30%, which is really quite remarkable. The thing which is so interesting about these drugs is that it, it is so easy to prescribe them. Uh, it is, uh, these drugs are, are given once a day. Uh, there is no up titration. They can be started at the very start of therapy. They can be combined at the same time with a beta blocker, a mineral corticoid receptor antagonist. Uh, there are so many ways uh, to uh, use them. They can be combined with an angiotensin receptor neprilysin inhibitor. So uh, they are so compatible and they not only enhance the efficacy but they enhance the safety of other drugs for heart failure. And, and that puts them in a very unique position. Easy to use, no up titration, a very well established benefit, and it, they make other drugs for heart failure uh, a bit safer to use, and that's very nice.